Hey everyone, this is your friendly neighborhood world film geek, Albert Valentin. It's a new month, that means we are shaking things up as it will, we are approaching the one year anniversary of the World Film Geek Podcast. So to start out the month of May, I have interviewed Keone Waxman, the writer and director of the new film The Ravine, starring Eric Dane, Terry Polo, and Peter Facinelli. The film will be out this Friday in select theaters, on demand, and digital. Waxman is known for his action films with Steven Seagal, as well as The Hard Way with Michael J. White. And I hope you all get to enjoy this interview as we get to hear Waxman try a little something different with his new film, The Ravine. How's it going, Keone? Good. How about yourself? I'm good, man. I got to say, I'm a huge fan of your work, man. I love ah, thanks. Your action films from like the last <laughs> decade and a half. I, I, I just love it. But My body count love, time. <laughs> and I love that you went something completely different with The Ravine uh, in terms of the story and the, you know, the cast. It was... I couldn't keep my eyes off of it. I just kept watching it. It just got me intrigued with the whole story. Fantastic. Great to hear that, man. I really appreciate that. So how did, how did this project come about? This one brought, was brought to me by a lot of the same guys I do the action movies with. Um, and it was a book given to one of the producers named Phil Goldfine, who, um, from a friend of his, and he passed it on to me and said, hey, take a look at this. Can you do something with it? Or does it interest you? And I read it and I'm like, oh, it's kind of a cool, you know, uh, you know thriller. But the novel itself was really more about, and this is where the movie went, more about the, the authors. You know, Bob and, uh, Robert and, Pe and Kelly Pescuzzi, who wrote the novel, mm -hmm. they are Mitch and Carolyn. It happened, this is an incident that happened in their past. But really what interested me about it was that looking at the, or reading the book and then look, meeting them, you realize this is something that you could make a thriller, but more from the collateral damage point of view, rather than, you know, my... my you know, usual approach, which is, you know, you shoot them first, <laughs> right. right? So, <laughs> so it was, it was more about what happens when somebody does, when some, you know, what happens after, after, you know, uh, the hero mows down everyone in the room and leaves, what happens to all the people who are still there? And so it really became more of an interesting point of view that we wanted to do. And so from there we adapted it and, you know, it, it evolved it into the film. What I liked about it was that it was completely different, as you said, but normally when it comes to mystery thrillers, it's like they're determined to find out the truth. Like who, like right. they question, do they really, did they really know who this guy Daniel was? And right. I liked, I liked the fact that they had flashbacks to, to get Daniel's backstory. I think it more enhanced that portion of the film because normally in stuff like that, you would think, okay, well, you know, he's dirt, you know, maybe someone else right. did it and, you know, he took the blame for it. You know, you, you kind of get these, even I was, as I was watching, I kept thinking like all these different other theories in my head. So, all right. so it's quite surprising, like, you know, how everything comes out, but I really felt like it, the flashbacks really got, got us to take a look at this guy, Daniel, like who he was, but also question, you know, did he really do this or, you know, and what, or if, if so, why did he do it? And I really, that's what I really liked. I, I think that second question is the one that you don't know, people don't normally uh, delve into in a thriller, right? It's more like, did he do it? Did he do it? And, you know, since we open and we, we pretty much see that he, <laughs> we pretty much see what he does at the opening, you're like, okay, so why did he do it? And then when you realize that nobody saw it coming mm -hmm. and, it, and it takes everyone by surprise, that's the explosion, right? That's my pyrotechnic in it, other than the car. Um, but then, you know, the flashbacks are all about really kind of going, well, you could see it building, you know, and, and again, the collateral damage, and I, I keep using that term, but it's more about the fact that everyone kind of is damaged by it and everyone, you know, everyone's going to feel guilty. Everyone's going to feel this. Everyone's going to feel that. But at the end of the day, like you said, you know, you, you sit there and you go, but can I, you know, forgive? And I don't know, you know, I don't know if there's a real answer to that per se. The movie kind of, you know, skirts on the issue. If you want to move forward, you have to. Yeah, um, which, you know, but at the same time, um, doesn't mean you're not angry. It doesn't mean you're not hurt. You right. know, um, so I think the flashbacks actually help uh, formulate that a little bit more because you, you know, you, you see where they came from, and um, you know, you kind of see that it isn't just that where they came from. Therefore, oh, okay, it's more like you see where they came from, and you see that some, you know, the person who's telling the story going, oh, I knew that part about him. <laughs> Maybe I should have seen this, and so it's a little more implicating, I guess, is the term. Yeah, and this was an excellent cast you worked with. Eric Dane, Terry Polo, Peter Facinelli. I mean, they were just great. What was it like working with them on the set? It was great. Eric, Eric, you know, I, I've been saying, you know, he's so, uh, you know, understated. You know, he's so like an old, old, uh, you know, and I, the first time I worked with him, but he's so, to me, he reminded me of, you know, an old studio actor where, you know, 
you know, you, you know, he's, you know, he's technical. He's going to hit his mark. He's going to say his lines. He's going to look good. But then you watch him, you're like, wow, there was so much nuance in that. I had no idea that that was, he was bringing that. Yeah. And, um, you know, I just think that he's, he's very, he's, he's perfect for the ball. And then Terry, I mean, like literally when we sat down with her, I said, you know, you're, you're going to cry every day. <laughs> you know, you're, you're, you're a role. You know, I think you have one day where it's happy and the rest of the time you're, you're just distraught. And she's like, it's going to be hard. It's not me. She says, but I'll bring it. She, she even said, she goes in between takes, I'm going to joke around, but it, I'm not, I'm not unfocused. And she was like, like on every time. And then Peter, you know, the first thing he said, I, I love Peter. And the first, very smart guy, very smart actor. But the very first, the first thing he said was, he goes, I want people to understand not why he did it, but how someone could do it, you know? And right. I think that that's a great approach because again, it goes back to the, you know, your, your typical thriller is, you know, why do you do it? Right. But right. really it boils down to like, how, how, how could that happen? Right. Yeah. So again, you know, he, he really got it. So those three, and then, you know, rounding out the cast with Leslie Uggams and Byron Mann, and then all of the local cast and the kids playing them younger. That was fun. You know, yeah, that's great. And uh, so how long did shooting take and what challenges did you have to face during production? Well, um, we shot for, I don't know, maybe four weeks in New Orleans, you know, um, and the hardest part of shooting in New Orleans was the, uh, you know, the ravine where we threw the car over the edge. And, that, and a big part of that is technical stuff like that. And I've done a lot of technical stuff. Um, that shouldn't have been too difficult, except then you throw in the fact you're in New Orleans in, in rainy season <laughs> oh, yeah. and, and the ravine turned into, you know, the mud, uh, <laughs> car didn't roll. So that was a big deal. Um, but you know, you sort through it, you don't panic when that kind of stuff, you just, you know, you just keep shooting. Um, you know, those are the days that you have six cameras, so you move them around. Um, but then, and I'd forgotten this earlier, someone asked me this earlier, but the other part of it is that the opening, uh, when we're in Austria, we went to Romania to shoot. And so we went to, not only to Romania, but we, we went to Transylvania, like five hours out into Transylvania. We were in the middle of nowhere, not nowhere, but we were definitely not near the city, not near Bucharest, a little town called Sibiu. And it was beautiful to shoot there, but we shot there. And while we were there was when the whole world was closing down because of the pandemic. And yeah. while we were shooting, we had the radios on here and, you know, Prague just shut down. You know, they just closed the border here. They just closed the border there. We wrapped and that night and the next morning i woke up and my phone was just blown up with get on a plane get on a plane. They're, they're closing the borders you're never going to get back and we managed to just get back i literally landed managed I landed at lax and it was it was a ghost town never seen it a ghost town and by the time i um got home and woke up the next day it was the whole world was shut down so we 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 literally just made it up so those were our two most difficult you know production things but then yeah. the pandemic slowed us down in post for sure yeah, so so were you intending to shoot in Romania before, like the whole movie in Romania, or did you know you were going to New Orleans? No, it was just it was just for it was just for that one flashback in the movie. And in the novel, they're they're in um, they're somewhere in Italy, you know. And we are going to the Amalfi Coast actually. And I was like, oh please, oh please, I hope we go to the Amalfi Coast. <laughs> but <laughs> but um, you know, you can tell the story somewhere else. And I've shot in Romania quite a bit, um, and so we knew a great town that um, you know there that's called Sibiu that you could shoot. And the idea of it was just that in real life, um, you know, when Danny's brother heard about it, he was out of the country. Mm -hmm. So he couldn't come in immediately. And that's why everyone ended up talking in one room. So we really wanted to maintain that. And we wanted to maintain the aspect that he was far enough away where the onus had to fall on Mitch and Carolyn to kind of figure it out before they could sit down. And so it felt really important to put them somewhere else. And to go to Romania, at least before the pandemic, was... Um, pretty easy i have a whole crew there that i shoot with a lot and so we rolled out there but you know you got back by you know <laughs> just yeah, made, you made it by the yeah skin yeah. your teeth basically but exactly that's awesome but um yeah. i gotta say and let, like you mentioned leslie uggams i liked her character so much because it was like i felt like she was like a MacGuffin, if you will like she just yeah. about what's her purpose in the film you know what i mean it's like right 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 because i in the flashback the guy talked about her character basically mm -hmm. and then she comes up later in the movie so it's like oh what what does she have to do with all this? Right. And, you know, as like, you, it makes you wonder. And like, and then another theory popped in my head, like who, who she was. And then when I, once the whole movie like ended, I'm like, Oh, okay. So that's like, <laughs> right. I was like, I, once I got it, I'm like, okay. So that's what happened. Well, and, she, and she's so great for it. I mean, Leslie's such a beautiful person, you know, inside and out, you know, and it's funny because, you know, my, my, my kids came to the set and they're like, Hey, that's the woman from Deadpool. And I'm like, well, she's done a few other things, yeah. You know? <laughs> um, but she was great. 
you know, and she, she, you know, she just really understood the character, you know, and she understood what, you know, the, the importance of that anchor. Right. Um, so, you know, it was great. That's awesome. Yeah. So after this movie, what is next that you can talk about? Well, um, I'm going to be, I'm heading out to do another action movie soon, but I just, after this, during the pandemic, I went to Hong Kong and shot a romantic comedy, believe it or not. Um, and, you know, like I said, I was joking before my death, my, 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 you know, my uh, you know, uh, kill ratio was pretty high in my other movies. And then in this one, there was only maybe a few people. Uh, the one I just shot in, in Hong Kong, I, not only is there no guns, but nobody, you know, nobody gets killed. So, um, but it's a, uh, it's a, it's sort of a, it's a, it's a, you know, a, a, an R-rated rom-com in Hong Kong. That, so I got, I gotta say, I love the fact that you're thinking outside the box, like you're, you're right, yeah. away from your usual, you know, your niche of action flicks, and I love oh, that. You're, totally. I think well, all, I, directors, all directors can follow you suit. They need to like experiment with different genres. I'm glad you got to try. That. You got to try different things, and I'll tell you, comedy's hard. Comedy's difficult, and you know, and while I was in Hong Kong, all the all the stuntmen there were like, "Come on, you're really shooting an action movie, right?" I'm like, no, I swear. <laughs> we're, not, you know, we're not but um but i appreciate you saying that i i'm mean, actually pretty excited about it but hopefully that comes out soon yeah and i've seen my share of rom-coms from hong kong i i, I really enjoy them so i'm i'm hoping i'm oh, very cool wait to see this one so very cool very cool so the ravine will be out on may 6th and those who love who want to see something different from keone will want to see this one especially when it's it's going to keep you wanting to guess what's going on and throughout the film it's, it's going to keep your it's going to keep you your mind wandering and ultimately, you'll you'll be. I think you'll be satisfied with what comes out of it. So, thank you so much for taking the time to talk about the movie. I, I appreciate that, but I really do. Thanks a lot, man. All right, and you take care and you stay safe. Yeah, you too. All right, take care. Take care.